In this video, we'll be going over price alerts. The simplest type of an alert is a price alert. And a price alert does not require a chart in order to execute. It can be triggered by the bid, ask, or last price of an instrument. Now, price alerts can be created directly from the alerts panel by clicking on the create alert icon or via the price axis by right clicking on a specific price and then clicking on create alert. Now there is a difference in creating an alert via the price axis or the alerts panel. The main difference is this. If you create it via the price axis, Motive Wave will assume the current symbol of the chart. So in this case, it's going to assume that this price alert will be for the euro dollar. However, if you create the price alert via the alert panel found here by clicking on the create alert icon, you have the option to select whatever symbol that you wish in order to place the price alert. In the create alert dialog, we have three sections. We have the instrument section, parameter section, and the notification section. Let's start with the instrument section. So from here, we can select a symbol that we would like to place the price alert on. In this case, I would like to select the current euro dollar symbol as per this chart. So I am going to click on search and select it this way. Alternatively, I could have selected it from the drop down list. So we've selected euro dollar and now shows the symbol, the bid and ask price along with the spread. We have parameters here. Under the parameters, we have a condition, and the condition defines the criteria for triggering the alert. It has two input fields, and the first input field can be any of the ticker inputs, such as bid, ask, daily high, daily low, daily open, daily close. And the second input can be an absolute price, or alternatively, if you select the indicator field and check it, you can then select a relative value, for instance, from this list, if I were to select daily high, then the condition would be when the bid crosses the daily high. So we have, again here in the second input field, we have some options, bid ask, daily high, daily low, daily open and daily close. Now there are three different types of operators available for comparison. The first one in crosses, which means if the first input crosses above or below the second input, then that will trigger the alert. There's cross below. In the case where the first input crosses below the second input, the alert will be triggered. There's cross above. In this case, when the first input crosses above the second input, the alert will be triggered. Then there is touches. And in this case, an alert is triggered if the target value here is either crossed or touched. Here we have trigger multiple, and if this option is checked, the alert will still be valid after it's first triggered, but it will be triggered indefinitely until it is explicitly canceled. Here we have a label and comments, and these two fields enable you to add your own text to an email notification that is sent when the alert is triggered. So under notification, if you select to send an email, by selecting yes, then whatever is specified in the label in the comments will be sent along in that email. Under notification section, we have show alert. Now, if this is selected to yes, then the alert history window will be displayed when the alert is triggered. And if it's set to no, then it will not be displayed. We have play sound. And if this is set to yes, a sound will be played when the alert is triggered. This can either be the preset sound or a specific sound file that you can specify. If you want to specify a specific sound file, then it's just a matter of unselecting you use preset sound, browsing your computer for a specific sound file, selecting it, and it will then show in the sound file field. Here we have the option to send an email upon triggering alerts. If we say no, then no email will be sent. If we say yes, then we have to make sure that our email is configured properly via our configure preferences, and there's a separate video for that. 
Once your SMTP server is selected, you can then send it to the default email or specify a specific email address here. OK, let's set a price alert here. I'm going to turn send email off. And I'll use preset sound. Let's click OK. OK, so now we see the alert. It shows up in our alert panel as well as it shows up on the chart. So let's just wait for this to be triggered. You'll notice that I can cancel this alert at any time by clicking on the letter C here for cancel. So the alert's been triggered. It shows here in our alert history window. And if we click on chart, it'll bring up the chart. You will now see it on the chart. It now shows in our history. And from here, we can either leave it or if we want, we can remove it by clicking on the X. Okay, so our alert history is now cleared. All right, we take a look at our alerts. We now have no present alerts. Let's just create another quick alert. If we had selected trigger multiple, we click OK. Let's move this down. Again, you can always click C to cancel it. You'll notice that the price alert, again, is in the alert panel. Let's just wait. Let's move it down just a bit. OK, so it's been triggered. It keeps triggering. You'll notice it keeps triggering because we selected trigger multiple, whereas in the other case, it only triggered the one time. So if we click on close, you'll see under a history, we have the multiple triggers, but the alert is still active. OK, at this point, the only way to get rid of the alert is to click on C for cancel. OK, so that's it for this video, and we'll see you in the next.